Hey, what's going on everybody? It's JB the Ranch Mechanic. Very happy Saturday to you. Uh, today we're just going to be doing a quick modification to my 2007 Tahoe. Um, more lighting modifications. Now I am aware that a lot of you guys are looking forward to some videos um, about the Silverado and the deer damage repair and all the parts and stuff that I've ordered for that. It's in the works. I actually have quite a bit of that done already. But unfortunately, the truck is back at the dealership because the water pump just exploded at 68,000 miles and stranded my wife 40 miles away in town. Well, everybody, the water pump is completely shot. Check this out. Now, first of all, there's coolant everywhere. Second of all, It's shot. There's no stuff left of the bearings. So off to the dealership we go again. So I'm a little bit miffed about that right now. It's a holiday weekend. Monday's Labor Day. Today's Saturday. So it's Labor Day weekend. I'm not going to get the truck back till next week probably. So all that's been put on hold. And additionally, some of the parts that I ordered were damaged in shipping. <laughs> so I'm waiting on the manufacturer to replace those under warranty. And of course, nothing is available right now because COVID. So I'm doing the best I can. Unfortunately, a lot of things are on hold and I've been very, very busy. So I'm telling you guys, it is coming. I do have some stuff filmed, but I don't just want to throw videos out there that aren't complete just so you guys can have something to watch. I mean, I think the end product would be better if I can just get everything finished the way I want it finished. So it's coming. So update on that will be hopefully coming soon. Um, but today what we're going to be doing is working on the Tahoe and let me turn the camera around. And I'll show you what we're going to be doing and why. Okay, so as many of you guys know, I've, I've done several videos on this dating back probably four or five years. Uh, this is an aux beam 30 inch light bar that we have on the front of it. And below that is some very, very cheap amber and white strobes that I bought off of Amazon that actually <laughs> surprisingly still work. Um, I, I installed those when I was doing roadside assistance uh, when I was working for Allstate on the side. This was years and years ago. I just haven't bothered taking them off because there's really no need. But, amazingly, the stupid things actually still work. I did weatherproof the entire thing and uh, sealed everything up with uh, clear silicone so no water has been able to get in there. But, as you can see, both the, the strobes and the, uh, the big floodlight bar there, they're cheap lenses. They're yellowed. They're old. They're aging. And now that 30-inch uh, aux beam light bar that I have on there, as bright as it is, uh, it's starting to flicker and fade and die. And I know this is not a very good comparison because it's the middle of the day and this wall is not exactly ideal, but with any light bar of this typical design, the old rigid style, you know, Chinese knockoff, um, they don't focus light at all, uh, at all. They throw light everywhere. But as you can see, there's no hot spot anywhere. There's no focus. It just, it just puts light out everywhere. And with it tilted back, it creates a gigantic hot spot right in front of the truck on the road that almost blinds you at night. So it's, you don't even really want to run the light bar. So anyway, you know, having lots of light is good, but out here, it doesn't do you any good if you have, you know, really, really bright lights for about, you know, 50 or 60 feet in front of the truck and then you can't see what's coming up in front of you. So what we're going to be doing is taking off the old aux beam 30 inch light bar and I have Instead of rigid knockoffs, now I have Baja Design knockoffs. <laughs> These are actually made by Lightronic. They're about 50 bucks a pop on Amazon. And I got two of them because I have room for two of them. They do make a 22-inch uh, light bar. These are about 11 inches long. They do make a 22-inch version of this that's just one long piece. The problem being is that you can't get it in all clear spot lenses. You have two white spotlights and then two amber floodlights on each end, which I have no desire or use for. I need the I need those I need spot beams. I need light being thrown way further down the road than than what this light bar or what a flood lens on that style of light bar can provide. So I have two of these and it's just a straight spotlight configuration. You know, I actually emailed those guys at Lightronic and asked them if they could provide me with some, you know, clear spotlight lenses for the amber and, and clear one, and they couldn't do it. They don't have any, according to them. So I just ended up getting two of these 11 and a half inch Lightronic spotlights, and they will go here where the 
aux beam light bar is currently sitting. We'll have two of them side by side. Of course, that's not going to sit on there without me holding it. But we'll have two of them on there right next to each other. And then I have some two into one Deutsch connectors that I can use to, to get everything set up properly. But before we even get to that point and, and, you know, start drilling holes to mount these things, I'm going to pull these front covers off and I'm going to put some clear silicone around where all of these gaskets are just to make sure we don't have any dust or water getting in there. So let me bring you over to the workbench. We'll get some silicone. We'll get the light bars. We'll get them taken apart and we'll get them sealed up. All right, guys, got to the bench here. Um, hopefully that zoomed in a little bit. Hopefully it uh, stays in frame here and in focus. So basically on the front of the light bar here, we have a series of screws. There are two and a half millimeter hex. So you'll need a two and a half millimeter uh, metric hex bit or Allen wrench to get these off. Um, you want to do this ideally in an environment that's not full of dust and breeze and contaminants. It'll get down in your lenses, but it looks like they have basically a series of these like triple O-ring deals that go around here, but you can tell just by looking at them that the lenses don't push down evenly on them. So that's the reason that I wanted to add that silicone. So we're going to pull these apart and just kind of see what we end up with. If I can get my ratchet to cooperate here. I'm going to get going on this. I will bring you back as soon as I'm finished. Okay, got all the screws out. Um, well, I haven't taken the caps off yet. This is going to be a first look for both of us. Uh, no surprise here though, these fasteners are very poorly manufactured. The heads are not a consistent size, so the the bit went in really easily in some and was very tight in others. I ended up, once I broke them free with the little ratchet here, I ended up going and gritting the drill and cheating a little bit just to make it faster to zip them all out. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and pull these off. So you got your, your lenses and gaskets are separate pieces. So there's our outer covers there. And as you can see, there's little bits of metal and stuff from the screw threads. It looks like because of the uh, relatively inexpensive manufacturing of the uh, body here, some uh, metal shavings have come out. So we got our lenses here and these have, oh, lots of debris on there. Lots of metal shavings and debris on the gaskets. So I'm glad that we did this. This is the reason why I do stuff like this to find things like this that we need to take care of because no doubt if those got wet that would not provide a very good seal let's see what this one looks like not not as bad on this side but still a little bit of the same there's a few little pieces of stuff in there and then these guys here these white gaskets that's kind of goofy i mean i guess it's you know good for redundancy but kind of silly looking but Everything looks okay here. You know, these are based on, I believe, the Baja Designs uh, on X6 style reflector design. Obviously nowhere near as bright or as focused, I'm sure. Um, I have not actually mounted these to the truck and tested them yet. I have tested them with a benchtop power supply down at my house. So just to make sure they work. And they do work and they do appear to be bright. I don't know how much brighter they're going to be compared to the light bar that's on there now but what I'm looking for like I mentioned earlier is just focus I want this light to get concentrated and thrown down the road rather than just scattered out everywhere right in front of the truck and then you can't see anything further down because the big the big concern here is cows deer antelope and elk elk not so often but mostly deer and antelope for obvious reasons given all the uh, issues we've had with our Silverado because of deer and our minivan before that because of deer. The more light we have shining down the road, the better. So what I'm doing now is just going around these gaskets and just trying to get as much of this junk off as possible without smearing my greasy fingers all over these lenses. But I'll be cleaning the lenses, you know, before we put this back together. So I'm going to go through, clean everything up. Um, pretty standard, you know, LED configuration in there. The LEDs are actually very well centered and very well mounted. The adhesive looks really good. You don't see any, you don't see any of like the, the canted off, off center, non-focused LED chips that you get in a lot of these cheaper light bars. So everything actually at first glance looks really good. So that's promising. I'm going to go ahead and get everything cleaned up. We'll get the uh, silicone cracked open and we'll get everything sealed. So give me a couple of minutes here and I will bring you back. All right, guys, I got the first side 
sealed back up here and kind of wanted to do a proof of concept before I brought you back on video. So I got that figured out a little bit. So basically, because we have two sets of gaskets here, we're going to have to do two separate layers of silicone. You don't have to do this, but, you know, spending an hour getting your light bars sealed up properly before you install them is just going to help eliminate headaches for you down the road. You know, the more effort and time you put into a project like this now, the less issues you're going to have to worry about down the line, you know. Like that little cheap light bar, the amber and white strobes that I got on the front of the truck, I spent an hour and a half or so ripping that entire thing apart and I used silicone around every single connection point, every single sealing surface. And you know, that thing cost me, I think, 25 bucks. I don't even remember the manufacturer of that light bar, but the, you know, it's been on there for six years, guys. Six years. And it doesn't leak. The, the lenses are faded and you know, the UVs damaged them and yellowed them out and everything, but everything works still. <laughs> driving up and down these roads for years now, you know, so again, not necessarily a testament to the quality of the light bar itself, but the more effort that you put into the project before you do the installation, the better your chances are of having a good result later on down the road. So anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to put a, a really, really thin layer of silicone around here, and then we're going to attach the lens to the cover. And then we're going to take the silicone again, and we're going to go around the outside of this inner gasket, just inside all the screw holes, and then we'll, re we'll reinstall everything. But first and foremost, we want to go ahead and get our light lens put back on here. So we just take our silicone. And I just cut the very, very end of this thing off. And I don't lay a bead or anything. I'll actually kind of work it in as I go. And that just makes sure that it's kind of getting down into the surface that we're trying to attach this lens to. And make sure we're not going to have any issues. Now, the thing about this right here, guys, is that you do not want to use very much silicone. Because... The squeeze out will obstruct the lens if you use too much. Now there's a little bit of squeeze out on this first side that I did, but it doesn't go beyond the you know where the gaskets are. So you can see it from the front, but it's not going to affect the beam pattern or the output of the light bar is what I'm saying. So we're just kind of smearing this along as we go and just very gently squeezing the tube to get a little bit more out as we work it around here. And again, I'm not using very much. I'm spreading this around quite a bit. It doesn't require a whole lot. Almost done, and we're back around to the beginning here. All right, now, that's that's really all you need right there, just a real thin layer. And then if you have any on the inside surface, I just go around with my finger and just wipe that out. Looks good. And we'll take our lens, and this particular light bar, <laughs> there's some metal chunks there. Um, this particular light bar, remember the, the flat part of the lens goes down because that gasket goes toward the middle because it goes on like this. So we just set that guy down in there, press it in, and that's all there is to it on this part. These lenses, by the way, not scratch resistant at all. I mean, just handling them and just kind of wiping them off with a, with a clean rag, they're starting to get scratched up and they got a little bit of dust and stuff on them. So, I mean, it is what it is. Everything's going to be filthy out here within a matter of minutes of turning it on anyway, so I'm not too worried about that, but just something to keep in mind if you don't live in a, uh, the middle of the desert like I do. All right, so we got that done. We'll just set this aside for now, and then next thing we're going to want to do, I'm going to wipe the tip of this off. That's what she said. Right. And we'll take our actual light bar here, and again... We're just going to go right around the inside of these gaskets, just on the inside of the screw holes. We're going to go all the way around. Same thing. Very, very light coating, a small amount. Basically, the silicone, because we're using the silicone in conjunction with the gasket, the silicone is just there to kind of act as a, a minute gap filler. If there's any portion of that gasket that's not completely sealed up against the flat surface of the, of the light housing here, that silicone is going to kind of be the go-between and the sealer that's going to fill those gaps. We're not using the silicone solely as, you know, the sealant like we would if we weren't running gaskets. But because we have gaskets on here, we're not using very much. If that makes sense. It may or may not. I don't know. So same thing here. Just a real light coating. All right. So there we go. Now, again, a nice light little layer around there. And if you have OCD and, you you know, the, the smearing it with the tip of the applicator is driving you nuts, there's nothing saying that you can't just lay a nice clean bead down and then go around with some kind of tool and then spread it around and, you know, smear it after the fact. 
you can do it however you want. This is just one less step I have to take by just doing it with the applicator. So now that we've got our silicone on our lens cover and the housing itself, we can go ahead and flip this back around, line up our screw holes, and just plop her back down on there. And we'll just get our screws started here. I'm going to use the drill here and snug these down. I kind of treat stuff like this like I would a cylinder head, start in the middle and do a crosshatch pattern and then do the same thing on the outside. So we're just going to go real lightly and take up some of the slack in the gaskets. Um, and then we'll go back through with the ratchet and kind of snug everything down by hand to a, a similar torque level. Same thing again. And this is, again, you know, I don't have a torque specification for any of this. And even if I did, I don't think it would matter because these are very cheaply made fasteners. You're just trying to get it to a similar feel of tightness between all the fasteners, if that makes sense. Okay, good to go. This light bar is sealed. I'm gonna go ahead and get the other one done. I'll do that off camera, but that's the basic process that I use. Um, I am not worried about, you know, anything on the sides here. There's rubber gaskets underneath these caps, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, if I get water intrusion anywhere else, I will definitely let you know. But for right now, I'm going to call this one good. Anyway, get this other one done, and then I'll bring you back when it's time to figure out how we're going to install these on the truck. You know, do you ever go back and revisit work you've done in years past and actually get annoyed because you did such a good job and it's a pain in the ass to actually take everything apart again? <laughs> That's kind of the situation I'm in with all the uh, heat shrink tubing and wire loom and electrical tape and everything that I got the old light bar disconnected here. I ended up just cutting it off. I didn't have a quick disconnect or anything on here. It's just, uh, it was just spliced in with some uh, butt connectors. So I will add a Deutsch connector um for this application now that i'm getting the new ones put in but i'm gonna go ahead and unbolt the old aux beam here get that taken off and then we'll get the new uh, electronic units set up here kind of where i want them we'll mark the uh, location for some holes and get them drilled if we need to the issue that i think i'm going to run into is because i'm running two of those light bars instead of one i'm going to have to have mounting feet on the inside here worried about this this getting in the way if I have to drill more holes. So I might need to set those new Litronic light bars back a little bit further so I can get behind this to bolt it on. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Go ahead and get the old aux beam taken off here. And then we will, uh, I'll bring you back when I kind of get some stuff figured out and we'll go from there. All right guys, we've got the old light bar ripped off here. We got everything disconnected. Um, unfortunately, I was not able to use any of the existing holes to uh, bolt the new lights on. I was going to try to basically put the outside bolt on each of the light bars in the original holes that the 30 inch light bar used, but unfortunately doing it that way brought the center bolt really, really close to this other existing light bar underneath. And on top of that, there was not enough space in between the light bars to clear the brackets and the wiring and everything. So basically what I did is a little bit of layout work. I brought the hole back about an inch and then in from the edge five inches. And near I could tell, I mean, everything is metric, but it was about 10 and 5 eighths uh, hole spacing. So one light bar is going to go here. The other light bar is going to go here. We got the holes drilled and everything. I counter sunk them as best I could. Uh, I was going to paint over those to keep it from rusting, but out here I'm not too worried about that. In Ohio, I'd be more concerned about that. But now that we're living back in a very dry environment, I think we'll be fine. So I'm going to go ahead and get these things bolted on. And then we will proceed with figuring out the wiring. So give me a minute here. All right, everybody. We're going to be jumping around a little bit here, but it is actually a couple days later. It's Monday morning, Labor Day. I couldn't film everything I wanted to film on Saturday because, as I mentioned earlier, our Silverado's in the shop and my wife needed to use the Tahoe to go into town and run her errands for the weekend. So I had to get this thing knocked out really, really fast on Saturday, a lot faster than I normally would have done it. But essentially, um, everything worked out exactly how I showed you in the last little bit there. Um, we got everything mounted up. I did have to enlarge the holes a little bit just simply to allow a little bit of flex in the positioning of the lights. They're still not perfectly straight, but they're certainly, for this old thing, it's certainly good enough to, to get the job done. And the results are very impressive. Again, these have been on for two days now. Um, everything is sealed up. I actually did take the Tahoe on Saturday through the car wash, through a high-pressure car wash and 
no moisture, no dust, no nothing inside the lights. So they held up well to that. As an aside, the next step for this whole thing is going to be getting rid of this guy and getting some uh, some different LED light heads to go in there. Um, I might be able to reuse this enclosure. I'm not sure. I might just whip something up out of aluminum and make my own. But there are some inexpensive and really nice options from both uh, superbrightleds.com and ultrabrightlights.com um, as far as like amber and white strobe warning light type stuff. So I might end up going that route just to, since I got nice new lenses up here, those look really bad now. <laughs> Before with the aux beam on there, uh, everything kind of yellowed at the same at the same rate and they looked similar. But now we've got two brand new light heads up here and then those just look terrible. So anyway, it's about time for that to go anyway. It's not very bright. It's not a very high quality deal, but you know, it, it's done its job. Anyway, I'll deal with that later. That'll probably be a separate video. Basically how it works is we got this, we have a, a single Deutsch pigtail coming back here. Then I shortened this one so that the pigtails are the same length. So we got our two into one right here. Here's our double. This is where both connections for both lights come in. And then two into a single Deutsch connector down there, wrapped with tape and everything. And it's got, on, on top of tape, it looks kind of gnarly with the tape on there, but there is heat shrink tubing over all of this as well. Underneath that, the tape is just an extra measure of protection since everything bounces around so much out here. Um, I do have everything secured with zip ties. It is it is secured back by the fog light over here, but there is some slack, so that's just hanging. That's kind of how it was before. No issues there. It's just plastic that it's resting on, so it's not going to hurt anything. And everything is nice and secured with zip ties to the side of the to the side of the push bumper there. So the wiring is you know really kind of hidden, unobtrusive. It's off to the side, nice and tucked away, so you really can't see it. So that's kind of how it's set up. And I did, like I said, I washed this thing on Saturday, and. Just driving back home on these dirt roads. That's what we end up with. That's the joy of living out in the desert, so. Anyway, washing this thing was more to just prove that everything is sealed up properly and to get my windows clean so I could actually see out of this thing. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna roll in the footage now of the night shots and we'll bring you back here when that's finished and wrap it up. Well, everyone, it's moments like these that really kind of make you appreciate how a very subtle change to your setup can make a huge impact. So I'm in the middle of nowhere right now. I'm on the road leading up to the ranch, no street lights anywhere. So it is pitch black out here, but what I'm gonna do right now is just turn the headlights on. And this is a, uh, a 55 watt HID kit through uh, aftermarket uh, projectors. Um, I am going to be switching this back to LED soon here. I got the bulbs on order, but because of the holiday, they have not showed up yet. So anyway, I'm going to turn the headlights on first, and then I will uh, kind of phase in the rest of the lights here. So there's the HID kit. It's 55 watt. I believe it's 6,000K. Uh, I don't remember the manufacturer of the ballast. I think it's like Bolt or something like that. They actually stopped selling HID kits shortly after I bought this thing. Uh, so I ended up ordering some different bulbs. They're uh, Morimoto 6000K bulbs. So um, so that's the HID setup. That's, that's low beam only right now. I'm going to go ahead and throw my seatbelt on real quick so the thing's not beeping at us. And then we'll go head down the road here. Now I did also replace my little uh, hood LEDs with, instead of 3x3 three three LEDs, they're much smaller 2 LED um spot projectors kind of like what we have on the bumper but they're a little bit smaller but i'm going to turn those on real quick i have those aimed forward but slightly out just to kind of give us some peripheral lighting so that's what we got with those they are very bright in and of themselves it's off and then back on again um very impressive little bulbs those are made by akd and uh i got those also on amazon they're about i believe 35 dollars for the pair and they are extraordinarily bright for what they are so that's kind of my peripheral lighting. Again, they're spot, dual spot LEDs. There's two LEDs per side and they're focused kind of out here, just off to the sides of the truck, off the sides of the road. That's kind of like, you know, ditch lights or whatever. It helps me see animals and, and cows and whatnot that are about to cross the roadway in front of me. Uh, the big light bars up front, those are designed to give us distance lighting down the road. So. Uh, the high beams on this truck actually still do not work properly. I started having that issue as soon as I installed the HID kit, which is part of the reason that I'm switching back to LEDs. I think the HID kit is putting too much draw on the passenger side headlamp because that's where the primary part of the circuit hooks up and then it branches out and goes over to the driver's side. 
So anyway, that high beam bulb will, there's not enough current to power that high beam bulb, so I don't have adequate high beams. I mean, they still, one side works, that's just a halogen bulb. What we're gonna do now is turn on the main electronic light bars that I've got mounted up front, and it's a pretty amazing difference. So, so here we go. That is exactly what I wanted. Now, it, you see a lot of splashback, you know, it looks like they're aimed upward. You see all this in the air right there. This is because I just drove down this road and I turned around and now I'm heading back, so there's all kinds of dust and crap kicked up in the air. So what I'm gonna do is take a left up here and go down a clean section of road that I haven't driven down yet. And uh, hopefully a lot of that effect will go away. It's already starting to dissipate a little bit, but you know, now we're coming up to a hill. So there's no airflow, no wind, no nothing through here. But that, I, I wish that I had some, some recent footage of the uh, aux beam light bar, the 30 inch light bar that I had on here before. Uh, nowhere near as focused as this. This is fantastic. This is uh, putting light right down the center of the road and it's casting it really far out. That's exactly what I wanted because the biggest thing out here is that we live in the middle of nowhere. It takes a long time to get anywhere. And at night especially, it's not really practical to be you know, driving 25, 30 miles an hour when you've got 20 miles of, of washboard roads you gotta traverse before you get to the highway. So we're gonna take a left right here. We have not been down this section of road yet tonight, so it should be relatively clean, and it is. A lot less dust right in front of us, but I'm actually probably going to aim these lights down just a little bit. In fact, I'm gonna do that right now. Still playing with the exact setup here, so I gotta tweak a few things. Be right back. So I stopped to readjust the lights real quick, and that little guy just landed right in front of my pod lights. We have some of the coolest wildlife out here. See if I can get the camera to focus on that, maybe. Kind of cool, a really neat looking moth. Right behind it's a uh, little black mane looking thing there. It's all red, but it, the light's washing it out. That's pretty neat looking. Like pinkish. But yeah, that's what we get. Okay, anyway guys made a slight adjustment, but this is, uh, again, going back to what I was saying before, this is exactly the kind of lighting that I've needed on this truck for a long time. It's casting the light much further down the road. Rather than scattering it everywhere, it's actually giving me a, a path to follow, essentially, that I can actually identify hazards in front of me. So that's uh, it's a really remarkable difference. I mean, it's not foolproof, but... Um, it is a marked difference and it's going to really increase our reaction time if we have any uh, stray animals hopping out in front of us. So really impressed. For the money, I'm really impressed. It, it's still not a, a Baja Designs bar, that's for sure. Sorry, I got a moth buzzing in my head here. Inside the truck, whoops. It's uh, certainly not that bright and not that focused, but it's a <laughs> gigantic step in the right direction for this truck, especially considering how little I drive it now and uh, the fact that my son is going to be driving it when he gets his driver's license here coming up soon, which is a scary thought, but uh, I'd rather have as much safety gear as possible on this thing and uh, help, you know, make it ready for him. So, anyway, that's going to be it for this little demo. I'm going to turn around and get headed home, and in the morning, we'll finish this video up. All right, guys, well, as you can see, huge improvement in light output. Uh, I wish I had a good night shot from the original aux beam 30 inch light bar, but you know, suffice to say, the light coming out of the electronic light bars is night and day better as far as casting light and throwing it down the road and actually illuminating the area in front of you, you know, two, three hundred feet down the road compared to what you have with just a, a regular rigid style light bar. I'm really happy with it. Um, again, these are about 50 bucks a pop. I did just order. Uh, some other stuff for my wife's truck for the Silverado. So we'll be looking to kind of revamp the install on that. Again, I've already installed some of the stuff that I bought originally um, to repair the deer damage. More will be coming out about that here in the coming weeks. So as soon as I get the truck back from the dealership after the water pump gets replaced, um, we'll uh, hopefully be able to start rolling out some of the videos about the Silverado. So anyway, um, Litronic White Bars, got them on Amazon. 
and we're going to be doing something with these strobe bars underneath there eventually. I don't really need these anymore. Um, I don't do anything that uh, requires, you know, having amber and white strobes on my personal truck, but I have responded to a couple of rollover accidents out here that happened right next to the ranch on the county road, and it's nice to have that kind of stuff, you know, for the, for the hills and whatnot, the terrain, people come flying down there, and it's nice to be able to kind of help out the sheriff's office with traffic control and whatnot. They've actually complimented the lights on this thing a couple times, which I think is kind of cool. So anyway, that's for another video, but uh, for right now, we're going to call the Tahoe wrapped up as far as the lighting goes. Unfortunately, the oil leak it has gotten significantly worse. There's actually a couple puddles of oil on the ground just from me having this thing in here in the shop on Saturday, just pulling it in, showing you the first part of the video and then backing it up to actually install the lights. It dropped quite a bit of oil on the ground. So I'm going to climb under there now see if I can figure out where that's coming from. I'm pretty sure it's an oil pan gasket. But anyway, we'll get that figured out and I'll get the parts ordered if I need to. So anyway, that's going to be it for this one, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the Labor Day holiday if you are uh, if you have the day off today. And just remember, there are plenty of people who don't get holidays off. All of our nation's military personnel, police officers, firefighters, EMTs, paramedics, dispatchers, and you know thousands upon thousands of other uh, public safety support personnel. So if you are one of those people and you don't get to spend this day with your family, uh, enjoying a three-day weekend. My hat's off to you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for doing what you do to keep all of us safe and, and healthy and happy. So again, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Hit that like button if you like this kind of content. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. We'll catch you on the next one. See ya.